Hello, and welcome to our new LEGO-inspired series. We'll guide you through the entire process of creating 3D animations using the Naomi Animation app. We'll cover everything step-by-step, -step, making it perfect for beginners. So, without further ado, let's start by explaining the layout and navigation. First, let's create a new project, which will automatically create the first scene. You can use your finger or pen to rotate, two fingers to pan, and pinch to zoom in and out. Pretty standard controls. On the left side, you can find the action buttons, which we will cover in a minute. The bottom of the screen displays the timeline, and in the right corner, you can find the hierarchy view with the inspector and split mode, allowing multiple views. Lastly, the left corner has the main menu. Let's add the character to the scene. Tap on the asset button. This is basically a library of all your models. You can easily import new models via FBX, GLB, and OBJ formats. Next, bring the asset into the scene. Again, use one finger to rotate, two fingers to pan, and pinch to zoom. Great! So, how can we animate? Do you see these colorful shapes around the character? These are called controllers or effectors, and they allow us to manipulate the model. So let's grab one of them and rotate it. Cool, right? But we can do so much more with different tools. Select the controller and hold the magic button. Why magic? Because it does a little bit of magic. Let's see. Hold it and then tap anywhere on the screen. The pie menu will appear and you can quickly change tools. You can select the move tool to translate, rotate, and scale. These are the essential tools for moving the character. You can also switch between world and local orientations. Let's save your scene from the pie menu. Saving regularly is crucial. You also have the option to delete your character. But if you want to bring them back, both undo and redo options are available in the pie menu. Undo can be triggered by tapping the screen with two fingers and redo by tapping with three fingers. Excellent. One more thing. When you don't have anything selected and hold the magic button, the pie menu will display slightly different options. From there, you can choose to hide the controllers, go to full screen, or hide the grid. Next up is the select button. Oftentimes, you'll need to select multiple items to animate them. You can achieve this by holding down the select button. Then, either draw a selection box or tap on the controllers you want to add to or remove from the selection. It's intuitive and just takes a little practice. Before we move to the last button, here is one hidden feature that will make navigation in 3D so much easier. With any controller selected, you can double tap on the magic button and your view will focus on that point. This is incredibly helpful and is an essential part of moving around. Now, onto the most important button in the whole animation universe, the key button. Just tap on it and your first keyframe will be created. Then, move a couple of frames forward, adjust the character, and another keyframe is automatically created when interacting with the controller. And here is your very first animation. With all these new keyframes, let's delve into the timeline. You can scrub with your finger or pen, or use the buttons to jump between keyframes or go frame by frame. The play button, if you tap on it once, it plays in a loop. But if you hold it and then release it, it will jump back to the original frame where you started. Now let's focus on the very last button, the record button. Just select any controller, tap on the record button, and perform the action. Your motion will be recorded to keyframes. Imagine doing this multiple times, mixing it, combining it with keyframe editing, and you have a powerful tool. It almost feels like operating a live puppet, with timing done by your hand. Let's move ahead by exploring the timeline and discovering what we can accomplish with keyframes. Starting with the basics. To select a keyframe, hold down the select button and draw a selection box around it. Two icons will then appear, one for deleting the keyframes and one for duplicating them. You can adjust keyframe positions by dragging within the selection area. While the selection area is active, holding the magic button and tapping on it enables you to set curve interpolation, offering options like smooth, linear, and flat tangents. Great. 
With that, let's check the very last thing, which is the top bar where we can find the individual channels, translate, rotate, and scale with each axis. We can easily change the values either by sliding left and right or manually inputting the value. One important function here is when we hold the magic button and tap on the channel, we can reset it to zero. It works for selection as well, so you can quickly get your character to default pose. Now that we've gone through the fundamentals, let's create our first scene. We'll begin by importing your custom model. Navigate to Assets and select Import. You can choose between FBX or GLB files to import directly into Naomi. Today, we'll focus on LEGO models using Macabrix. Head over to macabrix.com where you can browse through their library of models or create new ones in their editor. Once you've found the model you like, download it as an OBJ file. Next, we'll use our OBJ to GLB converter to prepare the models for Naomi. Open the converter and select the downloaded Macabrix file. Let's adjust the scale factor and tap on Export to create a zip file. Be sure to give it a name and add the zip extension. It's crucial. With that done, confirm and save. Now, import it into Assets by tapping on Import and selecting the converted file. Perfect. You can now see the model displayed. Here, you can set up a number of controllers for your model. If you don't want to animate every single piece, simply leave only the pivot. To control individual bricks, tap on All, Confirm, and the very last step is to bring the model into your scene. And now, you're ready to animate. Next, link the models together using a process called constraining. Align the two models. Then select the main controller and go to the hierarchy view. Find the controller. The yellow highlighted one is the selected controller. Now, add a parent constraint component and under source, choose the main controller of the wing. Now, if we move the main controller, the character moves with it. Great. Next, let's create a simple animation. Create a keyframe on the first frame, then go to about halfway through the timeline and rotate the model to the opposite side. At the end of the timeline, rotate it back. To make a perfect loop, we can duplicate the first keyframe and move it to the end. Perfect. Now we have a loop, but the animation is a bit boring, so let's make it more dynamic. Go to a couple of frames before it's fully rotated and add an extra keyframe. Now move it to the left. Do the same for the other half, and set the interpolation to smooth. You can spend more time tweaking the animation. Next, add a camera from the asset library and position it. Split the screen and look through the camera. Cool. Finally, animate the camera moving in. Again, you can spend more time polishing the movement. The camera also offers some cool effects, Tap on the right corner to adjust features like bloom, film grain, depth of field, and more. Now, let's tweak the lighting. In the hierarchy view, go to the environment section where you can adjust the ambient intensity and modify the HDR image. Websites like Polyheaven provide a variety of free HDR images for download, which you can use as backgrounds in Naomi. Experiment with different images and intensity levels to enhance your scene. We can also select the light, turn on its visibility, and adjust its angle. You can change its color and intensity as well. In the Assets section, there are other lights available, allowing you to combine them for unique effects. And the most crucial step is to render your animation into a video. With nothing selected, Hold the magic button and navigate to save, then select video. Choose the camera you prefer to use. From there, you can select from various presets or create your custom resolution before hitting the render button. After it's finished, you can either share it directly or save it to your gallery. 
That's it for this video. In the next one, we will cover rigging your own characters and animating their faces.